Hello everyone, and welcome back to Abundant Automation. Yes, so first of all, as you may gather from the notification in the bottom left there, I did fiddle a bit with the mods that I have in this playthrough. In particular, I threw out the um, train position length fix, because I don't know how long this series will go, and it might well be into the... 0.13 patch which will of course change all the train related stuff so I don't actually want to uh, put another mod on top of that. Also I installed the advanced logistics system mod and upgrade planner and also more light which will in fact be helpful uh, so that you guys can actually see what I'm doing during the night. Okay so what's this? Now we need couple inserters there. Okay, yes, so the plan for this episode, we did end the last episode on the notion of starting a basic commodities factory, but looking at this, um, we don't actually have a ton of iron to go by, so I think that'll be one of the first things. Uh, yeah, let's just, let's just go ahead and do that, get a couple more iron miners on the go. So we'll need iron to make iron. Seems about reasonable. Also, I think I came about full circle on this whole idea. I think I'll just keep these going straight up ahead so that that way I can have a four white space here. And these two I'll just use to, I don't know, draw power lines or something like that. All right, so uh, mining drills. How many do we actually need? It's about 1 to 2 ratio, so 12 would be a good idea. How many do we have? We have 8. Mm. Yeah, so let's go up to 12. Mm. Now what the hell, let's, let's do just a couple more so we won't have to come back just as often. Hmm. Oh well. So this will more than saturate the current setup. We can always expand it at the smelting. Directly. Plus, we'll need another another furnace chain anyway, pretty soon. So, we might as well put the minus down right now. Okay, um, that's about it for this one. Hmm. Let's say we just go for a fully compressed uh, yellow belt here, which I have no idea how many miners you need for it, so just eyeball it. Throw a bunch of miners at the problem and see how many actually do stick. Bring power up around there. It's still not quite there. Let's put a couple more down here. Now this will obviously skyrocket our pollution in this area. We're already up to five thousand pollution units, but we are we're decently yeah, we're decently well defended. So I'm not worried. Alright, that's that. A couple more power poles. Bring this in, and oh, now that's pretty much the whole field done, so no matter if... Yeah, we do have compression. Pretty neat. Okay, so that'll be a bit more... a bit more iron. Now we won't actually be able to... 
uh, produce a full yellow belt worth of iron from this. So what I'll do is just uh, plant down another another furnace chain. So that we actually use all this iron ore. Let's get another 24 of those. Uh, also fast inserters. And let's get to work on this one. So we'll again do one, two, three, and four. Little reminder belt there. That's our load balancer. And in like that, then 12 furnaces. Whoops. Do that 10 and 12. Go to the tree. Well, speaking of tree, I did go on a little rant about uh, about rocks not being mineable during the last recording session. And apparently there is actually a mod which makes rocks mineable. So I might just get that. But to be honest, it's not that big of a deal. Okay, so... Uh, that's long-handed inserters. There's an interesting piece of, well, it's not actually trivia, an interesting piece of information on the inserters is that fast inserters are actually more power efficient than regular inserters. At least they were sometime in the past. I don't know if the, uh, the mechanics that were in place when this, uh, when the experiment I was referring to uh, was performed are still in place, but I would suppose so because I don't know everything all that changed about inserter mechanics in the uh, in the close past would be the change that they no longer pick up stuff from that's not actually on a belt anymore. So I suppose it still still stands. So what I'm, what I'm just trying to say by, <laughs> by means of way too many words, is once you have fast inserters, use them everywhere. It's uh, actually more efficient than resorting to normal standard inserters, just because you don't need the speed. Even if you don't need the speed, they are more power efficient. Okay, so that's that. Also, uh, more belts, probably a good idea. Also, nab some of those magazines. And then connect my second line of iron here. And for now, we're just going to connect this down here. I'm thinking about um, piping this directly into the steel furnace line that's also up and coming but yeah for now that's gonna be iron sorted now let's then you know what i don't particularly like the look of it this whole business here well this this part's actually fine but let's yeah, let's actually do something like this. I did think about this a little bit, and one problem with this is that we will need to uh, we will need to build smart inserters at some point. For our science setup, so it would be pref uh, would be preferable to have the the fast the regular inserters a little bit more 
exposed. So what we'll do is do this and then have that feed onto this belt. And uh, now that's of course a horrible mess, but you know, we'll just run with it. We're, <laughs> we're that close to electric energy distribution one, which will make all of these obsolete anyway. All right, so we just need a little bit of a little bit of that, a little bit of that. And what that means is, oops. All right, oil, we will want to do oil pretty soon. is that we can get rid of this horrible piece of spaghetti over there. Ah. Terrific. Okay, now yeah, you know, why don't we why don't we just go ahead and expand this a little bit now that we do have enough iron to do so. So let's do something like this. Um, these will be fast inserters and smart inserters. Also in need of some more of those. Man, I burned through this iron. But that's just to deal with the early game. All right, so these will feed in there. It's not the most efficient, but hey. These will feed in there, then these can feed in there and also into a separate chest. This will later be upgraded to a passive provider for the time being, it's totally fine. And then we'll need just iron and green circuit. So that means we can just bend these two lines. There we go. Oh, and it seems like our power supply is dwindling. So that's that. Probably be a good idea to also automate. Mm, we'll hold off on science for the moment until we sorted power. Yeah, these electric miners they do they do drain a lot, so it's it's not actually that surprising. Okay. Let's put down these electric, uh, these steam engines, hook them up. I'll just wait on the production here for a little moment. Now one comment in the uh, Reddit thread about this uh, Let's Play series actually talked about the uh, differences between using burner inserters and regular inserters or any kind of non-burner inserter for this and I came to the conclusion that it's still better resource wise so I did a little experiment um, which came to the conclusion that it's still better resource wise to to use 
burner inserters. The only downs uh, to use electric inserter. The, the only downside with them is that you um, you will need to do a little bit more kickstarting if you have a negative feedback loop like this. So that's something. And maybe, maybe in the future we'll actually do a large scale, uh, large scale steam engine setup. And then we'll we'll be able to to think a little bit more about this. But for the time being, oh, I do have tons of coal here. Why don't we use them? These tons of coal. And as I said, there's no reason to have regular inserters here. Okay. Now one other thing that's a little problematic with uh, with burner inserters is that it's you can't do things like this where you have like another set of boilers back here and then another row of steam engines feeding off the front lines. I mean you can do it, but it's odds are that the burner inserters are not going to keep up. Uh, with the with the demand and the the more uptime the burner inserters have the more fuel they produce or the, the worse their efficiency gets when compared to the um the electric inserters which kind of defeats the whole purpose i mean if you if you have a burner uh, if you have a steam engine setup that where the inserters only need to uh, within the, where the inserters almost never actually do anything, why do you have so many steam engines? Just build fewer engines. I think it's safe to say that you'd uh, save more resources that way. But well, everybody has their own style, and I guess power generation is one of the biggest areas of contention there. Now this is looking a little ugly, so let's try to deuglify it a little bit. We can also start researching a bit more. I'll definitely want a tool belt. Right, that's more like it. We won't be producing a ton of smart inserters just yet, but over time some will. Uh, some will be produced and we'll work from there all right now what else can we oh butters in the base now where did you come from that's the question here that is indeed the question now most likely they did come from the east so it seems like a good idea to put down another another set of turrets over there. Now yeah, that's for the time being. Just put it here and be done with it. Defenses are never that um, that absolute anyway. You always have to adjust them based on your needs. The good thing is we now have a somewhat somewhat of an idea where the banners will attack from, so we can work with that. Okay. What else can we do? Another thing would be... Yeah, I was just thinking about automating some stuff down here. So we already have green circuits and iron in the vicinity. Assembling machines are just that and gear wheels. 
so is steam engines, so is offshore pumps, so is mining drills, so is lamps essentially, so is repair packs. So we'll probably, yeah, pretty soon automate all of these somewhere around here. In fact, let me just very quickly before we wrap this one up plan a little bit. So let's say this uh, let's say this whole setup is blue science. I think I'll shoot for about 12 12 laps of blue science, 12 assemblers I mean that would mean we're finished back here and these two are inputs. Now blue science is I think it's all stuff that I'm going to produce externally. What unlocks blue science? It's something in the oil tree. Batteries? Yes. All right, so batteries I'm going to bus. Red circuits I'm going to bus and steel I'm going to bus and smart inserters are produced here. So there's really no need to leave room for more infrastructure here. So we'll just leave these two here as sort of a reminder and then we can use all the rest of the space over there to our liking when uh, actually this time for real <laughs> producing uh, commodities in the next episode so as always thanks a lot for watching if you did enjoy the video please consider hitting some of the associated buttons below and or leave a comment for me i have been discrined and i hope to see you soon